chief of police of Tokyo had been kidnapped by the most ruthless psychotic villain ever known, called the master alias Lord Nemesis. And his officers had just been given a tip off on the location and whereabouts of their boss. The funny side is that Lord Nemesis is awaiting their arrival, for he is not afraid of any challenge from anybody. They were sure that this was the right location and they were well prepared for Lord Nemesis, for he was a turn in the flesh for Tokyo's police department in committing heinous crimes by poisoning the Oguchi Reservoir, the gas attack on the Tokyo Dome, and the theft of the Kusanagi, a legendary Japanese sword. They were close to rescuing their boss. They were right in the building they believed he was held in, but there was a problem. The problem was that they should have double checked the tip off they were given, for it was a decoy to their death. They were in the wrong building, rigged with Lord Nemesis's explosives. As they busted into the room filled with explosives, the time bomb went off and the explosion killed all the police officers trying to rescue the chief of police. Letting the chief of police know the predicament befallen his officers as he began to taunt him of being incapable of overcoming or apprehending him. For he was Lord Nemesis and ruthlessness was his identity as the chief of police begged for his death and cursed at Lord Nemesis. At first, the chief of police didn't know where he was but realized that they were in a train tunnel close to where his men were murdered by Lord Nemesis and he had been beaten black and blue by Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs whom he had hired to cause disruption and commit crimes in the city of Tokyo. Lord Nemesis had caused many atrocities unknown to man and this wasn't his first rodeo. He had been going to the capital of each country with a low crime rate to cause destruction by increasing the crime rate and killing the chief of police of that city which spanned from China to Singapore to Hong Kong and even not Korea for he was the talk of the town and everyone around the world dreaded the day he embarked on their city. I mean this crazy psychotic unknown maxed man committed this crime for no reason or ideology to back it up for he is not a matter far from it and I want you to know that Lord Nemesis is no ordinary man for he is an unknown billionaire who is an adrenaline junkie. With the help of science and technology, he was able to augment his cells plus his DNA to make him super fast and super strong. And not only that, he was efficient and proficient in martial arts of all kind, be it karate or kung fu. Bring it on! Before a bruised and battered chief of police knew what was happening, he was squashed by an oncoming train. But our dear Lord Nemesis didn't leave it at that as he had already rigged the train track which made the train to derail and smash into buildings people were in and they met their debts and it was a lot of debt which he was delighted in for all his dastardly plans came to fruition without fail and his next point of call is the United States of America for he has an admiration for the chief of police of the city of Washington and he believes he deserves a visit from him for he was impressed with the good works of Blake Moreau which spells disaster. Blake Moreau was a maverick and was not your typical sit in the office kind of guy or stand by the side chief of police. He was always part of the action behaving like a typical American cop and a modern day Clint Eastwood. He would do anything to protect the lives of citizens and with a passion he loves his job. Blake Moreau is a pious strict Christian by nature. He is married with two children and faithful to his wife and family and with him being the chief of police of Washington the city experienced a mega crime rate for he stamped on crime like a ton of bricks which got Lord Nemesis's attention. After he took care of a hostage situation with his partner and personal assistant Sergeant Lee he got a visit from the FBI. They have come to warn him that he's on the kill list of the notorious Lord Nemesis, also known as the Master. He had sent a memo to Blake Moreau that by the 12th of March at midnight, he was going to end his life. And that was a promise in which Lord Nemesis never fails. This got the attention of the Chief of Police, for he knows Lord Nemesis's modus operandi, where he arrives at the city with a low crime rate, then sends a memo to the Chief of Police of that city promising to kill him at the end of his fulfilled mission. Hires some low 
local thugs of that city by promising to pay them millions and millions of dollars and make them commit crimes in every nook and cranny of the city. And not just any crime, I mean devastating crimes that cost lives. And as his newfound obsession, Blake Moreau was the perfect match. For this will be a battle of wits. He loves to humiliate pious men like Blake for his decency, which he qualifies as pomposity. Knowing this was true, the chief of police immediately ordered his partner, Sergeant Lee, to make a meeting with his most trusted police officers in the force and told his secretary to send flowers to his wife, Peggy, and with immediate effect, put his wife in police custody. It is known that Lord Nemesis has a habit of harming the families close to law officers. The President of the United States of America was arriving from an overseas trip on the Air Force One plane and they were about to land in Washington. Suddenly, both the two jets manning the Air Force One exploded. Every passenger in Air Force One was shook by the explosion, causing a ripple effect that shook the plane as Lord Nemesis landed on the plane's wings, running towards the cockpit. As the President and his bodyguards could hear someone running on the roof of the aircraft. Without seeing him coming, the pilots were shocked to see Lord Nemesis with a submachine gun and before you could say who shot John, he fired at them without remorse and took control of the plane. At the same time, the President and his men were novices to what was going on for they believed they were going to crash. For Lord Nemesis was nose diving the plane at a fast speed towards the street of Washington and not listening to the emergency warning from the air traffic control. In fact, he used the wings of the plane to crash into the air traffic control and landed the plane on the moving traffic road of Washington. He crashed into anything and anyone on his way as the crowd of innocent citizens took to their heels, screaming for their lives. One of the bodyguards gave the president cover to protect him from death and injury, while Lord Nemesis continued to do more damage on the streets of Washington, killing people left, right and center. No one was exempted. It was a fiasco of doom. Explosions everywhere. Cars smashing into one another. People were confused and had nowhere to run. It was a death in a thousand. It wasn't funny. The people of Washington didn't know what hit them. Was the president of the United States of America was nowhere to be found. He just vanished into thin air. Out of nowhere, there was a live broadcast from Lord Nemesis, sending a direct message and challenge to the chief of police of Washington, stating that his coming to Washington was a personal vendetta on behalf of his family when he was a child, and that if the chief of police got his memo, he promised to end his life at the appointed time, that he was the black sheep of the family, and he was going to burn the city to ashes for the chief of police, Blake Marrow, was incompetent so incompetent he couldn't protect his town or his boss, the President of the United States of America. And beside, Lord Nemesis was a bruised and battered President of the United States of America on his knees for all eyes to see.